I will kill my fucking bag. I won't kill nobody else. You going to say why? I was going to kill my fucking for zero dollars, but y'all won't kill nobody else. When the last time a neighbor died? When the last time a neighbor died? Like last week? Goofy ass. What you talking about? Hell no. I don't know nobody. I ain't never killed nobody, bro. Well, I'm, not even, I'm not even finna start stating facts on this. Can you say why you don't specifically like the Hoovers? Well, sh I got personal reasons, but I'm from a hood that we always hated them. Okay. So we always been back and forth with them. Be five, I had this tattoo cut yeah. hood ass. Yeah. On hood, but I lost somebody very close five boat. Yeah. Like a big crother five me hard here from 40s. Yeah. on hood. And then from there, cuss just been all gas on these yeah. dicks. Better ask about Chat Five on Hoover. Chat Five is my rap man. He better ask about Anthony to shoot him from Hoover. Said had your homies running plenty of times. Dead homies. Talking about. But nigga, like you coming from a whole different area, moving over here, just popping it about set, that's just like uncalled for because I know you, okay? Oh, so mm -hmm. a lot of that, you, you're saying a lot of that is like out of towners and stuff that just yeah, come through. Yeah, like C-Man. I'm your CM, your side sits, whoever, on neighborhood crib. Your wife's a monster on neighborhood crib and ain't no destruction destroyer on rolling crib. I'm like the cookie monster, cause it's crib blue, ain't it? On neighborhood crib. I'm a motherfucking hot goblin. Hey, C Mac. Hey, C Mac. We outside. Talking about we don't be outside. We outside. 55th Street. Tiny hardhead at 5P on hood. Tiny hardhead at 5P. That shit go. Hey, yo, squad. What's the drill? Before we even get into it, man, drop some blue hearts in the comments for the homie Nipsey one time. Things just ain't been the same since dude been gone, man. I mean, there's always been gangs in LA, but never before has social media been the stage for that lifestyle like it is now. One set that has recently rose to internet fame is the 55 Crips. They have been in the face of the media a lot lately with the rising of the hood star Crip Mac. It's also obvious they ready to go at anyone who disrespects the set. So the beef is showing no signs of ending for them. Today we gonna break down one of LA's most rebellious gangs, the 55 Crips and their ops. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. At this point, everybody knows Los Angeles, California is a beautiful city. But what is also understood is there's a flip side to that beauty and things can get ugly. The LA streets have been plagued with bloodshed and gang warfare since the blue wearing Crips and red flag and blood gangs of the 80s. The rise of the gang lifestyle had youngins in the hood joining gangs to make it big and stack their bread up. But with that came dark consequences. Gangs that were originally formed to protect black communities eventually ended up bringing the very dangers they intended to protect the community from. No one was safe, not the elderly, not women, or even kids and babies. The beef between the rival sets took an even more devastating turn as money and power corrupted the structure and the workings of gangs. The Crips turned from a powerful force under the vision of founders like Stanley Tookie Williams to various sets breaking apart from each other after internal conflicts sparked with the younger generation trying to flex their authority. It wasn't none of that jumping in. Uh, wasn't nothing about uh, being told to go do this. And when they did try to start that, that's when you end up with these sets. And that's how that came about else. The West Side didn't last very long, simply because of somebody trying to tell somebody what to do. According to an OG member, Melvin Farmer, different Crips claim their set opening the doors for the rise of Crip sets like Rolling 60 Crips, 8 Trays Crips, Underground Crips, and the Block Crips. This is when internal struggles started and they started to try to get a stru structure and everybody started going into sets at this time. And that's when you start getting the 60s, the A-Trays, the 9-0s, the undergrounds, the blocks. All these sets that you see have names behind them with the final ending saying Crip. They also created the Crip set focused on in this video, the 55 Crips, also known as 55 Neighborhood Crips. 55th Street, like Baby Snap said, live from the five. <laughs> Initially, they went by the name 55 Hustlers and like other Crip fractions, took their name from the street they rep, 55th. They would form rolling 50s Crips, joining with the 57 Neighborhood Crips and 58 Neighborhood Crips. Crippin was taking over LA and their ops were basically right around the way. 
The first is the 51 Trouble Crips. They originated as a graffiti crew, nothing but trouble, before going under the Gangsta Crips umbrella, adopting the name 51 Trouble Crips of 51st Street. Just as 55 Crips are allied with the rolling 50s and 60s, 51 Trouble is clicked up with the neighborhood Crips sets that are neighboring, widening the villains of the 55 Crips, the Hoover Crips, mainly the Five Deuce Hoover Crips, taking their name from their base of operation, Hoover Street, between Vermont Ave and Figueroa Ave. Initially, they went under the name Hoover Groovers before transitioning to their second form, the Hoover Crips, after falling out with the Westside Crips. But their final change came with the change to their current name, the Hoover Criminals, and their identifying color, orange. As if 55 Crips didn't have enough dealing with the 5-1 Trouble Crips and Hoover Criminals, they also have beef with the Harvard Gangster Crips around Harvard Boulevard between Western Ave and Halldale Ave. And can't forget their other nemesis Van Ness Gangster Brims of Van Ness Avenue in the neighborhood on Slauson Ave between Western Ave and Crenshaw Boulevard. Their hatred for the 55 Crips run deep and their graffiti can be spotted with 55K and crossing out 55 with their Van Ness Gangster Stamp. So now we have a better idea of what the 55 Crips are dealing with from all ends surrounded by their ops. I say pretty much cut every street. Every street out here is a different hood. This is 55th Street right here, but let's say you go two blocks down there. You in the orange rags over there. Just two streets down. So hey, we surrounded by everything, it's different. Before Crip Mac turned the entire world's direction to the 55 Crips, they were already known in the streets and their ruthless, rebellious nature gained them the title for being feared. But that came with a lot of bloodshed and loss. In 2009, 51 Trouble Crip member Ronnie F. Onley, also known as 007, allegedly caught 55 Crip member Keith Moore lacking multiple times in that same year. On the afternoon of September 5th, 2009, Ronnie F. Onley, a.k.a. 007, and Jason Wilder allegedly caught Keith Moore lacking for the last time. When officers arrived at the scene after a 911 call, they found Moore lying near 55th Street and Dinker Avenue with fatal gunshot wounds to his lower back and upper thigh. Around the crime scene was a bicycle on a grass parkway nearby and 12 9mm bullet casings in the street. Eyewitnesses at the scene will report the cops of seeing Onley, also known as 007, running from the area pulling his t-shirt up over his face. Reports also state a witness saw 007 before the hit riding on a bicycle from an alleyway onto 55th Street, where Moore stopped behind a gray car after the hit. He dipped in the powder blue Camry with Wilder. Cops would track down 007 the same day, catching both him and Wilder in 007's Red Monte Carlo. Upon searching a small storefront area that comprised the front portion of 007's home, revealed a storage case for a Smith & Wesson gun and an ammunition box containing 18 rounds of 9mm ammunition. 007 will be found guilty after investigations and trial and sentenced to 80 years to life for the crime. The ops were applying pressure on 55 Crips and they wasn't close to being done. On December 27, 2011, 51 Trouble Crip Rayvon Moreland and Marquise Khalees, also known as Tiny Crumb, allegedly caught a body and upped the score. Tiny Crumb is so ruthless that the feds distinguish him by his EKG haircut signifying his code to make his ops flatline. General 55 Crip's affiliate 57 neighborhood Crip, Andre Lockhart, also known as D-Rock, and 55 Crip associate Stephen Wade, also known as Tiny Drawdown, was the next target. According to the court documents, D-Rock and Tiny Drawdown were walking outside a market on the corner of 55th Street and Normandy Avenue when the car driving south on Normandy Avenue turned right on 55th Street. D-Rock wasn't a general for nothing. He picked up on the suspicious nature of the whip and gave Tiny Drawdown the heads up. An op in a fitted shirt hopped out of the back seat, up the pole, and started busting before escaping in the whip westbound on 55th Street. D-Rock lost his life when he caught that headshot. By some stroke of grace, D-Rock's sister Talitha Lockhart and sis-in-law Irene Mason was present in a parked whip on 55th Street around the time D-Rock was murked. His sister made out the shooter wearing jeans with a short sleeve green shirt and being of medium build, approximately 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing around 130 to 140 pounds. Tiny Drawdown was also being interviewed as a witness and spilled the beans on the shooter. 
court documents state that he pointed out Tiny Crumb as the hitter. Even with this and video footage, the cops needed more concrete evidence and they paid an ex-gang member and confidential informant some money to pose as an affiliated gang member to draw info out from Crumb in a holding cell and not only worked on Crumb, but also the driver Rayvon Moreland, aka Tiny Mickey Mouse, who cops later arrested. Tiny Mickey Mouse would get 10 years and Tiny Crumb 25 to life for the hit. 5-5 five five Crips was suffering losses, and from investigations, cops uncovered a possible origin that intensified the feud with the 51 Trouble Crips. The two claim the same territory of 54th Street. It's the southern border of the 51 Troubles and the northern border of the 5-5 five five Crips, so there's always a standoff right next to each other. Of course, the 5-5 five five Crips were no pushovers and were already plotting their get back. July 4th, 2012, around 10 p.m., 16-year-old 5-5 five five Crip member Jeremy Stevenson and another 5-5 five five Crip affiliate would allegedly go op hunting in the Van Ness gangster set area. They will find a target to retaliate on. It was the home in Nikoi, chilling on the front porch with her mom and friends Dashua Hunter and Anthony. Jeremy approached with a rifle and his homie a handgun before stopping under a street light, yelling out F crabs and busting behind the group. Hunter will be hit in the face and foot with a bullet breaking his jaw and lodging in his spine, leaving him with permanent facial numbness. Due to the evidence at the scene and eyewitness accounts, Jeremy Stevenson was charged and sentenced to 40 years to life for the crime to which he was fighting to appeal at the time. The report of the incident would detail the long-standing feud between the 5-5 five five Crips and Van Ness Gangsters. 55 Crips were on their bully and wasn't about to let it in there. On July 4, 2014, around 6 a.m., allegedly 5-5 five five Crips caught another body in a case of mistaken identity. Dame Trius Dolby, Jamon Carter, Clifton Floyd and Ryan Shields, all 5-5 five five neighborhood Crips, saw the victim who the court documents label as JN walking down the 54 Van Ness Gangsters region. Dobie and them pulled up guns drawn and a struggle broke out. Shots were fired severing JN's finger and wounding him in the stomach. 55 wasn't satisfied though. Reports state that just two hours later they found two more individuals labeled as EC and MM. Dolby and his 5-5 five five Crip homies caught EC and MM outside of their aunt's house in the Five Deuce Hoover territory, about two miles east of where JN was shot. Dolby and them spun the block and yelled out F Snoover and fired four or five shots before dipping. Maurice was hit multiple times and succumbed to his injuries at the hospital. Surveillance footage, eyewitness reports, and evidence in the vehicle led to Dolby receiving 50 years to life. Worse yet, none of the lost souls were gangbangers, just happened to be in the rival gang territory. Gang beef doesn't care if you're innocent or not, man. It just claims lives and leaves pain and loss. The 55 Crips have still been locked in a deadly beef with their ops to this day. Now that Crip Mac is on and attaining fame, he's been beefing with Hoover members. Jab 5, Milk 74, and Treyway 6K. Hell, C Mac has even been beefing with Blueface. I'ma break your face, Custer boy. On hood, blue face, custer face, on hood. You can never walk a couple days or even a day, huh? in the county jail. And his ops have been dropping disses and burning flags like it's nothing. All right, no more entertaining. You weirdos on hood, snooper sexuals, and whatever else is out there. You white boy milk. The Custer, tongue ring, snoop sexual jap on hood. No more entertainment on hood, look. Hopefully no more senseless bloodshed spills on the streets and C-Mac can enjoy the fame and growing success and put his hood on. So there you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support, man. I'll catch y'all on the next one. And remember, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.